What's up, guys? We're here. Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm bringing you possibly what is supposed to be the best sorceress build this season. And I'm very, very excited. I finally got it done. I'm just one star off of having everything to 12, and I'm pretty happy with how it all turned out. So I got the build guide here for you. I'm going to break down everything, the skills, gear, Paragon, all that stuff. And of course, we're going to do a little bit of a showcase here. But let's go ahead and break everything down. First, I want to give a big shout out to Makuna for kind of finding this build and uh, allowing some variations and tweaks to be done with it. So big shout out to him. So first, let's go ahead and get into the skill tree. So we got two points into, into Firebolt. That is just going to be our first enchantment slot because having burning damage with one of our Paragon nodes is, or Paragon nodes, our Paragon Glyphs, Flame Feeder is super powerful. Just allows us to do multiplicative damage. So good. Then we're going to come down. We're taking one point into Frozen Orb. Yes, I know I have Shaco, but for those who do not have Shaco and want to run a more basic version of the build, then you need to put at least one point into Frozen Orb because this is what's going to help us with our Fracture Winter Glass to just chain a bunch of, uh, you know, Conjurations. More importantly, Lightning Spears. So next, you're going to wonder, well, why War? Why do we have all these points and these extra things? So I'm not, neither one of these are on our bar. Okay, first we have charge bolts down into destructive charge bolts. This is literally just for they're reducing their damage by 25% for three seconds. That is literally it. Next with chain lightning, we go into destructive chain lightning. So critical strikes from chain lightning have a chance to form crackling energy. We need crackling energy, and we'll talk about that more in a second. So how do we get both of these to pop? That's going to be unstable currents, which is down here. Uh, when we cast this, it just whenever we cast a shock skill, a random four conjuration or mastery skill is also going to be cast, which is why we took points into here. So when this actually happens, you know, every time we cast our lightning spear, one of these will be cast at random, and then we get these uh, according effects. Next into defensive skills, we got one point into flame shield, which is our get out of jail free card. Immunity, unstoppable, great. Teleport into Shimmering Teleport for more DR, which is fantastic. We got Ice Armor into Shimmering Ice Armor. We want to have our barrier up as much as possible. And I'm pretty sure when you guys see the showcase that my Ice Armor shield is pretty much up the entire time, which is fantastic because then we're up we're somewhere around 50,000 life, which is still nothing compared to barbarians and like druids and all this other stuff. But it's still pretty cool to be up to 50,000 with a barrier. Uh, we got Glass Cannon for more damage. We got Elemental Attunement to reset one of our defensive skills. And then we come down to our Conjuration tab here. And we're pretty much taking everything except for the Hydra. We're doing Lucky Hit so we can trigger some more Conjurations. We're taking one point to align the elements for DR. Then we max out Mana Shield and Protection for an additional barrier as well as damage reduction. Then we got Lightning Spear down into Invoked. Stuns enemies, which is fantastic, and making them vulnerable. Then we got Ice Blades into Summoned Ice Blades, which is going to allow us to have more cooldown, which is fantastic. And then we max out Conjuration Mastery. I'm at rank 8 right now, which is fantastic. Just absolutely blasting. Then we're going to come down here to the Mastery tab. We're taking one in Inner Flames just to get to Devouring Blaze for more crit. This is so important. Then we're taking three into Icy Veil. Okay, this is very important. Your barriers have 24% increased duration. This is the key to why we can have Ice Armor up all the time. And when it stacks with, while it's active, its cooldown is, re is reduced for every 50 mana we spend. We are going to be spamming Frozen Orb, and it costs 40. So... Every one and a half casts, we're gonna, or every two casts, this is gonna go down by a second. It's already at 10. It's gonna go down super fast with our cooldowns. So this should be up pretty much nonstop. <clears throat> Next, static discharge here. Lucky hits on crits with shock skills give us crackling energy. This stacked with destructive chain lightning should give us plenty of, of uh, crackling energy, which is gonna help one of our paragon glyphs, which is gonna give us multiplicative damage, which is fantastic. I'll get about that in, in the uh, paragon section. Then we come down, we're taking coursing Currents, and then we're just taking Electrocution for even more reduced damage after the Ven Crit. And then, of course, Unstable Currents into Supreme. I'm always back and forth on this Supreme. You definitely need to have Prime for the increased attack speed. But Supreme, I'm always back and forth on. If you do take that out, what I would do is just put it back into Teleport so you can teleport more often. And then our key passive is Overflowing Energy. Crackling uh, energy hits an additional enemy, 
Each time crackling energy hits an enemy, our shock skill cooldowns are reduced by one. Um, 0 .1 seconds increased to 0.35 against elites. Now, this is mainly for two things. It's just for lightning spear and unstable currents and teleport. That's it. We want lightning spear pretty much on perma cooldown. We want to try to get as close to as much uptime on unstable currents as we can. And there's one other way that we can do this if you guys want to make a swap on a, on a gear piece. But yeah, that's how we're going to do it. And then our last enchantment slot is ice blades for even more cooldown. Now, into the gear. Okay, into the gear. Let me grab a piece here uh, just, so, just so you guys can kind of see it. Um, I don't think I have it on here. I don't have it on a gear piece. Um, I'm pretty sure I don't. Nope, I don't. Okay. So into the gear, of course, Shaco. This is best in slot. It has retaken its throne as the best in slot helmet in the game. I know that there's a lot of unique helmets that can do a lot of really good things for certain builds and stuff. But overall, the fact that this has crazy cooldown and I double crit on it is just insane. I was really hoping to get the trip crit. Maybe once I get some more materials, I'll, I'll try it again. But it's really, really tough. So Shaco, best in slot. Then we got Tyrael's Might. Okay. Another best in slot for the damage reduction and dealing more damage. Now, if you don't have these, you can still run the build as is and not have these. You're going to run a helmet just like this one, right? With like concentration. And then you're going to do a chest piece like this with ever living for more damage. Both of these are perfectly fine to use without Shaco and Tyrael's Might. You could definitely get away with it. Next in our gloves, we're doing Storm Swell. This is the power that we're going to have. You're really going to want to have as much crit damage as possible because the build scales on crit damage, which is why we have it tempered absolutely everywhere. Next, we got Tabalt's Will. This is huge, not only to maintain our mana, but just for more increased damage. Now, if you do not have Tabalt and you want to use a regular pants piece, that is perfectly okay. I can't remember what the power is let me see if i can just pull it up it's a uh, uh ultimate it's an ultimate chest piece yeah the orange herald so this is one that you can use on a pants piece which will work if you don't want to run to bolts or if you just don't have it so on a lucky hit there's a chance to reduce the ultimate the cooldown of my ultimate by two seconds and it only can happen once per skill cast so every time you cast a skill you could lucky hit and reduce it so i have not tested this build with it it's very hard for me to replace Tabalt's will. I know it got you know reduced last season, but it's still arguably best in slot um, for pants for the most part. So um, you know it's really hard, and it really helps with the mana. Not that it, we have too many issues anyway, but this is just so strong. But if you wanted to try something else, definitely try that. I still want to test it out and see if it's actually any good. Then we got Esus here. Okay, you want Esus one hundred percent. All right. Because we're going to be having splintering energy on our build. Okay, so this is the what the build, all the damage comes from. It's not Frozen Orb. It's not even because we have Fracture Winter Glass. It is not Frozen Orb doing the damage. I want to make that very clear for people who misunderstand how this build works. All the damage comes from Lightning Spear. All of it. The build is centered around splintering energy. Critical hits with Lightning Spear cause Lightning to arc dealing 4,500 damage to its target and up to five other enemies. This damage is increased by your critical strike bonus. My critical strike bonus is almost 2,000. All right? You want to get this as high, as close to 2,000 as possible. It is a huge benchmark. Okay? It is not frozen orb damage. I just want to stress that because I've had people in my chat ask me and, I, you know, people in the comments and all this stuff asking me about this and... I think they get they get misunderstood because we have fractured winter glass. It's not be it's all splintering, it's all lightning spear, okay? Now the reason that we want Esus is because we need to crit. We need to crit with lightning spear for this to really happen, okay? So my critical strike chance is 62% with Esus and when I dash, I go to 80. This is the minimum benchmark, okay? The minimum. You need to get to 80% Obviously, if you have it less than that, then that's okay. But you really want to benchmark for 80. Now, ideally on here, you want to get as much crit strike damage as possible. Again, on here, you would like to have like GA crit strike chance, just like I have here on the ring. And you want to double crit like I did here on the ring. But 
you want to have as much Chris Strike chance as possible because you're going to be evading with Essus to get that increase to crit nonstop so you deal insane amounts of damage. Next, on our two-hander, we are using a two-hander to deal the most damage possible. The most important temper here is the chance for Lightning Spear when cast for um, to be like chance for a second Lightning Spear when cast. All you have to do is crit this one time. You should be able to get to 100% as long as you have a decent roll. If you have a very low or min roll, you need to crit it twice. But if you, if you have a decent roll in the 50s or high 50s before getting to 65% on the original roll, crit it once, you'll get to 100. It's perfect. Then we got Band of Frozen Orbit. This just allows the explosions to pop twice. And the reason for this is because of Fractured Winter Glass. We're going to be able to have Frozen Orb, Chance to spawn a random conjuration. Hopefully, we get more lightning spears, but more conjurations are, are, are just great. Uh, and then our conjurations have a chance to launch frozen orb, etc. right? Then we got Tal Rasha's, of course, with uh, double crit on cooldown. You want to have as much cooldown as possible. So we got some really good items here. Um, the next thing for frozen orb to be exploding is how we're going to get a lot of our mana back, um, which you'll see right here in the Paragon board. Let's go. So Paragon board. We have Elementalist for more damage. Okay, we got Tactician for more damage when we cast a defensive skill, which is all the time. We got Reinforced for even more non-fizz in all res, but damage reduction is the most important. Then here is the big glyph, Charged, okay? Crackling Energy grants us up to 15% multiplicative damage. You only need to pick up three to get to the 15%, which is why we have those chances to spawn Crackling Energy. So you get this, 15% multiplicative damage is so good. I did test and try with Unleashed. This is only 8% multiplicative, so if you don't want to run Crackling Energy, then this one is a very good replacement. Then we have a con Conjurer, of course, for more Conjuration damage for our Lightning Spears, and they last longer. Now our Legendary Nodes, Elemental Summoner, has reduced cooldown and, or mana cost, which is huge. We max that. Then we have Frigid Fate for more damage. We max that. And then over here, we got Destruction for more crit. We max this. Then we got Flame, or excuse me, um, Exploit for more Vuln damage, Multiplicative damage. And then we have Flame Feeder for even more damage there. So this is pretty set. It's pretty straightforward. The build is insane. Um, the only, like, stitch I will, I like, I'll have with it is just pressing the button sometimes i feel like i'm jamming the buttons to actually like cast spear i really really hate how like casting multiple skills in this game uh is i really hate it we're just gonna do a 103 um as a as a solid benchmark i'm doing 103s or higher as a solid benchmark here um in the pit just so you guys have this but yeah, there's times where I'll be like pressing lightning spear and you'll see the button highlight two or three times before it's actually cast. And I just hate that. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and spam this. All you're going to do is run around, teleport. You're going to cast this and throw your frozen orbs. That's it. That's it. And you just bounce around. It, it destroys everything. It destroys everything. Now, as history has shown with Sorcerer, Okay, you see I've got the crackling energy just spawning. Right, you only got to have three, so I get that multiplicative damage, which is great. It is for five seconds. I'm not even going to pick up any of the uh, the stuff there. The crackling energy kind of kind of sucks on the, uh, on the crits. I really wish it was easier to get that for this build, but um, yeah. But we just blast through. I thought about putting points into... Um, ball lightning just to see if it would but ideally it's not going to work to spawn a lot of crackling energy so yeah you can see the build just it's just so easy man it might be it's it might even be better a better farming and clear speed build than uh fireball and i really enjoy fireball but this one is just I don't know, man. There's just something about it. It reminds me of Ball Lightning in Season 2, but it's not as good as Ball Lightning in Season 2. Ball Lightning in Season 2 is the GOAT. I don't care what anybody says in the comments. Okay? Ball Lightning was the GOAT. It was the GOAT. But the build is very easy to play. We want the explosions on Frozen Orb to give us some more damage. 
All right, now let's go kill the boss. And you see how that our flame, our uh, our ice or our Arzheimer is pretty much up the entire time. Now this is like I said, this is where sorceresses struggle all the time. This is where we struggle is boss damage. Yeah, and then we just die. I should have dodged it, but... And this is only a 103, okay? And my gear is is pretty dang good. And this is this is the one problem with Sork. So I don't want you guys to go crazy on the build. But I just want you guys to keep a realistic expectation. The build is insane. But... Like, it's... There's still some issues with the build, in my opinion. Which... have it like suffering like, and that's and that's just the boss damage man that is literally just the boss damage um it, it it's pretty solid i think i think makuna and uh rob or maybe makuna and racks have cleared up to like 120s or 130s with with it it can clear pretty high i haven't seen it go past 150 yet but the boss damage is the biggest issue with sork it just seems to be the same thing every single season so but with that said, this build is very, very fun. It's going to clear everything in the game super, super fast. This build is great. It isn't required to have both of these, but when you get them, you can start blasting. But the build is great, guys. The link to the, the planner and everything is going to be down in the description below. Uh, very, very fun. I really dig it. Now I'm going to move on to Chain Lightning and see how that goes. So like the video, guys. Let's get this to over 50 likes, 100 likes. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about this. Let me know if there's any other tweaks I can make to the build. And let me know if there's some other stuff that I could do to make this better. Um, I still love that I'm not even at 10,000 attack power. I just love it for Sorks. It's fantastic. Um, but yeah, guys, don't forget to subscribe if you're new. And as always, stay gaming. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.